Great. Well, thank you so, so much for joining. I'm so excited that, uh, you know, you all are here. And I know everybody's very busy, so thank you. Uh, most of you know me, but for everybody's sake, uh, I'm Romana Jabin, and I am with uh, Keller Williams Peninsula Estates. I have been practicing real estate for over 20 years. And um, as you know, I help people buy and sell homes. I basically concentrate on the Mid Peninsula, um, which is from mainly the San Mateo County, from South San Francisco, San Bruno, all the way to Menlo Park, you know, kind of like a Gen and Tech to Facebook, I say, you know. Mm -hmm. So you see the map there, what I'm covering. But even though I specialize in that area, which I truly believe in specializing, I have a huge network within the California, within the United States, and even outside of the United States, because Keller Williams is one of the biggest companies in real estate worldwide. So I do a lot of networking, as you can see that just from the quickly from the map, I have helped my clients buy investment properties or move out of the area and buy in other areas. I help them doing that. So Boomer Radiance, what is that? I established the series Boomer Radiance because I hear so many questions and concerns regarding our final stages of life. Um, like you have questions and I know we have answers. So what I did is people ask me about questions like trust and will, savings and tax strategies, coping with aging parents, moving out, downsizing, healthcare concerns, social security concerns, retirement, what to do. You know, that's a, one of the big things is like, I've been working for so long and I just don't know what to do after I retire. So I'm just not going to retire. <laughs> so hopefully we'll have some <laughs> suggestions for you besides the honey to do list. <laughs> How to afford it and when to quit. Should I quit? When to quit? So I bet some of these questions you have, these are very common questions that I hear. And that is why I joined forces and assemble the panelists. And I think they are expert on those. Uh, we have connections that we think we can help you navigating some of these questions and some of those hot buttons for you. Um, oops, let me admit Michelle. Okay. Um, Michelle, if you don't mind muting yourself, please. Oops, what happened here? Um, I need my technical advisor, please. <laughs> I cannot go to the oh, stop share again. I guess to to admit her. I already did, but I cannot oh. go down. Oh, click on. Okay. This and then this. Okay, wonderful. All right, That's we got a good place it. to go to. Yep, we got it. So. Um, here I am very excited to introduce my panelists and let me first introduce you to our first session speaker, Larry Jacobson. Hey, Larry. Hello. Okay. So Larry is a retirement coach. Uh, he's a businessman. He's a circumnavigator, believe it or not, and he'll tell you best-selling author and is recently ordained by U.S. alumni as the thought leader on retirement at their largest webinar ever for all UC campuses, including Berkeley, UCLA, and the rest. He is delightful and energetic, and you'll find out that very soon. And we feel so fortunate to have him join our team. So welcome, Larry. Thank you very much. If I were to ask you, to tell me something about yourself. Say if we just met at a cocktail party or we just met here. Do you know what you would say? Of course you do. You would probably reply, I'm a teacher or a nurse or an attorney or a plumber, you know, and so forth. And three out of four of you 
would give me an answer that included your profession. But that wasn't what I asked. I asked, tell me something about yourself, not what you do for a living. But we identify with our profession, and rightly so. We spend most of our lives creating our identity. So in a large way, our profession becomes our identity. So what happens when that career is over? What will be your identity when you no longer go to the office or the job site? Many of your social connections are from work. What will happen to your social life then? And if you're still saying, well, I'm a retired whatever, then you're hanging on to that past identity. Mm -hmm. But we have to let go of our past identity if we're ever to find a new one. You know, I love the saying that you can't steal second base if you don't take your foot off of first. So my job as a, as a non-financial retirement coach is to help you through that transition, find your passions, and create your new identity. You know, you've been calculating your fiscal retirement for years. Advertising is relentless and asking if you have enough money to retire. But when it comes to your time, you're on your own. So the average retiree watches TV more than four hours per day or nearly 30 hours per week. So if you've had a busy professional life, retirement can be more scary than exciting. Maybe you don't want to stop. You just don't know what to do with your time. Like Romana says, maybe because you haven't thought about it. But with your time and your purpose unaccounted for, it becomes easy to default to the wait and see choice. I'll just wait and see what comes along. But how much time did you spend planning your most recent car purchase? How much thought did you put into writing your company business plan? How much time do you spend with your financial planner? Time well spent, I might add, Bruce. And how much money have you spent on advice from your, your accountant, your attorney, doctor, psychiatrist, family counselor, travel agent, um, business coach, trainer, nutritionist, and all the other advisors in your life. But have you thought about getting advice from a professional retirement coach? Probably not. But that's our fault because probably very few people know we exist. Very few people know even that the profession exists. But there, there are some unexpected hurdles in retirement that as a coach, I think I'm aware of. And you can call them problems, challenges, hurdles. And tonight I'd like to point out a few of them and then how to best address them. So we only have time for three, barely. First, one of the big problems that surfaces not long after retirement is what I call the dark side. And it's an overall feeling of loss and disconnection with the rest of society. It's a lack of social connection because a lot of our social connections come through our work, through our careers. And then these losses tend to increase depression. So after the initial joy of, yay, I don't have to go to work every day, wears off, many retirees feel sad, uh, lonely, and depressed. And it's a feeling of emptiness. In fact, one third of retirees have clinical depression. And that depression leads to addiction. So drug and alcohol use is on the rise dramatically among baby boomers. Suicide rates are highest among white men 65 and up. And divorce, while national divorce rates are trending down, for those who are 50 plus, divorce has actually surged 50% in the past 20 years. In fact, one in four couples divorce after the age of 50. So the antidote or the solution to the dark side is to have purpose. And that means finding a new identity and staying socially connected and involved, which might take more work now. Communicating with your spouse or partner to discuss what it's gonna be like living at home together all day long now. Helping others, helping improve your community, teaching, writing, speaking, volunteering, mentoring, creating opportunities for others and giving back. And actually on the plus side to that, according to the American Heart Association, uh, if you have a strong purpose in life, you have a 44% percent 
less chance of having a stroke. So there you go. It's a good thing. There's a reason to have identity and purpose. So let me give you an example. I have a client who is a big shot attorney. I actually have a lot of clients who are attorneys, but this was a big shot. And his name was not only on the letterhead, it was on the side of the building. And then one day he retired and he wasn't needed anymore. And he'd call in the office every morning and say, hey, do you need me for anything? Any clients call and need to talk to me? No, we're just fine, they would say. And he was devastated. So he reached out to me and I coached him for nine sessions. And by the end, he was on the board of two companies. He was dating a new woman and he was in discussion with a group to help with their legal problems pro bono. He told me he was a, felt like a new man. So the antidote to the dark side is a new purpose and identity for your retirement years. And remember this too, please. You don't stop laughing because you grow older. You grow older because you stop laughing. I wish I had said that, but it was Maurice Chevalier actually who said that. And, you know, it's okay to ask for help. Baby boomers, we were raised to be self-reliant. We we're reluctant to discuss our personal matters with anybody. Um, you may have heard, you know, real men don't ask for directions. So, um, but help is available now with non-fiscal retirement coaches like myself. And speaking of help, a little, I'm going to give you a little bonus information tonight. I want to share with you the transition process that everybody goes through. There are three stages in this transition process. And this is the work of William Bridges, uh, who's the authority on transitions. And so, first of all, all transitions begin with an end. That's right. I know it sounds odd, but it's true. Think about it. An end to a career, a graduation, a divorce, a death of a loved one, losing your job. That's stage one of the transition process. Expect that. And then shortly, you move into stage two, which is the middle stage. And that's exploring, trying new things, trying new jobs, dating. And this stage could be short or it could be longer. And it could be even a year or two. And it's a stage that can be fun as you try out new things, or it can be frustrating as you can't find the job that you were looking for. But being just aware of this stage helps because you know you won't be here forever. And because remember, transition stages are meant to be moved through. They're not a parking lot. So eventually you'll move into stage three. And this is where Julie Andrews comes running over the hills singing, the hills are alive. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> the <laughs> birds are chirping, you know, the flowers are blooming and you have that feeling again that you're indeed alive. You've met a new partner and you've fallen in love or you found the perfect new job or you've enrolled in real estate license school and you have hope for the future. <laughs> So know where you are in the transition process and don't fret if you're still in the middle exploratory period. Just know that the stages of transition are meant to be moved through. They're not a place to park. Now, another one of the most common challenges I hear from new retirees is, hey, Larry, I don't know what I want to do with my time. If I knew, I would do it. Well, after a lifetime of, of work, you may find it difficult to let go of your identity. I mean, if you're a lawyer, it might be hard to stop being a lawyer. I've seen it over and over again with attorneys. So what we do is we look for new ways to use your knowledge and your wisdom, perhaps for needy groups, something that allows you to share your wisdom and feel like you're part of something larger than yourself. On the other hand, Perhaps letting go of your professional career is an opportunity to discover your other passions. You might be a retired CEO who really wants to be an artist, but you never pursued that during your, when you're in your career. So now it's time to give yourself permission to follow your dream. Give the left side of your brain a rest and let the right side of your brain have a chance. For so many of us throughout our careers, we needed to have all the ducks in order. And now I'm suggesting that you let the ducks sit wherever they want. So 
Um, this is a little tip that you might want to remember. Speaking of knowledge and wisdom, I wonder if anybody here knows the exact difference between knowledge and wisdom. And I'm just going to give it to you. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. <laughs> okay, there you go. You can take that one to the bank. So uh, finding your passion takes some deep introspection, asking lots of questions and answering them. And it helps to have an accountability buddy. So it could be your partner or uh, it could be a, a training course. For example, in the Sail Into Retirement video course that I've created, there is a passion quiz and it asks a lot of questions. Some are simple, some are more challenging. And after you've taken the quiz, you then go back and you look for common threads and duplicate answers. And then there's a good chance you're going to discover that at least something that you want to try to do. So like some of the example questions might or are, are, might be, um, uh, what makes you leap out of bed in the morning without a cup of coffee? Um, uh, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? When was the last time you over delivered on something? And what was it? And why did you work so hard? And then when you answer these questions, you go back and you get an idea of, of, of it focuses you in. So the solution to not knowing what you want to do is to take the time. Take the time to dig deep and discover your true passion. And don't be afraid to try something just because you fear going down the wrong path. All right, one more I think we have time for. So this is a very common issue that I see among retirees. They don't have a plan. In fact, only 30% of retirees actually have a plan for what they're going to do with their time in retirement. Why not? Most of us have a financial plan, right? Well, there's a few factors that enter into here. And the main one is we didn't know we were going to live this long. And we're, we're living 10 to 20 years longer than our parents. And that's a long time to golf and sleep in. So we didn't know we were going to need a plan. We never learned how to write a plan. And without a plan that includes your dreams, your goals, your objectives, and a blueprint on how you will achieve them, you're more likely to spend too much time watching television. You'll go to early bird dinners at Denny's at 4 p.m. You'll miss the interaction with others. And the worst one of all, you'll wear velvet track suits all day. <laughs> so, and you, and you might even end up longing to go back to work. And you will have missed the point of the most valuable years of freedom that you've worked so long and hard to obtain. So retirement does not mean an end. It doesn't mean an end to, to, to living, to learning, to loving, uh, laughing, exploring, and experiencing new things. And it doesn't have to mean the end of working. I'm working and I love it. Retirement's the opposite. It's opportunity. So now it's your turn to have a new big dream and a goals for you, not for the company. You know, there's a lot more to do in life. And this is the time to find your passion, share your experience, guide others, and feel good about what you're doing. And it's not as hard as it sounds. You just need a plan. And a plan can be as simple as Tuesdays, you volunteer uh, uh, at your synagogue or church. And Thursday and Friday mornings, you work your part-time job. And Saturday morning is yoga. Oh, and on every day, remember to put in laugh. So the solution to not having a plan is to make one. Make a plan for what you're going to do with your time in retirement, even if you make it for a day or two of the week. And ask for help. Ask for advice. Get a coach. I know a good one. Right? You don't have to go it alone. So why should you listen to me? I developed my coaching program based on my own retirement transition. And that was after 20 years in the corporate world, I ended my career as a CEO. And then I bought a boat. Not a great investment, but I did. And I spent the next six years sailing all the way around the world. I went from CEO to circumnavigator 
And that was quite a transition. And then I reverse engineered. I took another year and I reverse engineered all of the thoughts, the actions, and the processes that I went through in my transition. And what makes me, I think, different maybe from other coaches is that I took those results and I created this online interactive video course. It's the only one of its kind. And it's called Sail into Retirement. And it takes someone from, I don't have any idea what I'm going to do in retirement, all the way through to now I have a plan and I know the steps to take in that plan. So it's perfect for people who are retiring soon or have recently retired, you know, and still want to have a, mean, a life of meaning and purpose and fulfillment. Or this one I hear a lot. You've been retired for a while and you're wondering, is this all there is? I mean, I just get up and late and then I go to Denny's for dinner at four o'clock. Or you're retired and feel lost, not knowing what to do with your days. And some people have a nagging feeling that they're wasting their retirement years. You know, they're just not sure of what you want to do. You just can't decide. Or you're retired and you're struggling with that loss of your work identity. I used to be A. And I've coached all of these situations successfully. And I made the program so it's fun, it's funny, it's upbeat, and it's specifically designed to help you find, develop, and show your and 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 uh, have your passions, and to find purpose and fulfillment in your life. It'll give you the confidence that you need to move forward, and it contains everything you need to take the action that you need to do. And now I made it just special for this group is that it includes a free coaching session with me. So I put the whole program, the uh, the, the whole video program uh, and a coaching session with me on for, 25, uh, for $95. And that's for the whole thing. And you just go to buoytraining.com. It's B-U-O-Y training.com. And there you'll see the $95 special for everybody. So um, that's pretty much what I wanted to, to had time to go through tonight. Um, and I, I would answer any questions if there are any, and if there aren't, we'll move right along. I have a question, Larry. Yes, uh, sir. So I think that what you're doing is amazing, but I was just curious because I'm sure that there is a lot of inertia in terms of people not understanding exactly what it is that you do and how it works. So let's assume hypothetically, I wanted to become one of your clients. Could you walk me through the process of how I would get past my inertia and how I actually would move toward it and how we would start together? What would the process look like? Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, well, uh, the, the best is in person, but second best is on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And um, and I like to be able to see the person. So uh, that's a big improvement over telephone coaching. Right. Um, I would start with visioning. And I, we would do some visioning exercises. And the visioning exercises are they're trying to get you to imagine what your retirement life would be like. And specifically, what I do with that is I try to coach people on um, when you vision something, most people are standing outside of the picture and looking in at this picture. Okay. And I try really hard to get the person to not do that, but to rather be the person in the picture and see what that feels like. What is what what is what do you see? What do you feel? What do you smell? What what what's what's it like being that person in that picture? Then once we have a vision of some sort, we can then start to say, okay, how are we going to get to that vision? That comes with because someone might have a big vision like sailing around the world, something crazy like that, <laughs> right? So uh, how do you, how do you, what do you do with that big vision? It seems insurmountable when it's so big. Well, the answer is that we break it down. Mm -hmm. We break it down into steps, into specific goals and objectives so that, and then break that down further. Okay, how do, what, what do you need to get to that particular goal? What do we need to get, take to get to that particular goal? Then when you add those goals and objectives up, it becomes the big vision that you've achieved. There's um, uh, sections of the course that are about risk. How much risk are you willing to take? There's, uh, there's an entire uh, uh, module about fear because a lot of people fear going down the wrong path 
or taking the wrong uh, road in retirement. Um, and, and, and there's about commitment and having a positive perspective, what the way to look at things in a positive view rather than a negative view. And then we go through a, a whole section about um, balanced life, living a balanced life. So for example, I used to preach, just find that one passion and go for it. And that's what I did to make my dream come true of sailing around the world. Well, I believe actually that you're a more interesting person and you have a better interesting life if you have a variety of interests, not just sailing around mm -hmm. the world. And so I try to get people to examine um, a lot of different areas of their life, recreation and volunteering and and giving and, you know, and family and all, and that. Mm -hmm. So those are the, those are some of the first steps, Bruce, that we would take. Great. No, it's I, really good. You know. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Um, John or Jennifer, you have a question. I see your hands up. Yeah, that's John. Um, yeah. Hi, John. Yeah, Larry, Larry, thank you. Ramona, thank you for hosting. This is obviously very timely for me. And so, yes. um, yeah, I, I, in a lot of what you're saying resonates. The, well, the one thing that's making me sad is you said I can't wear the red tracksuit because that was something I was hoping for. <laughs> <in retirement. laughs> Actually, they're usually purple. <laughs> Whatever color, as long as, it's, as long as it's velvet, I'm good. No. A lot of what you're saying is really resonating, you know, because I've been, I kind of retired from the fire department, but then didn't, didn't really retire. But it's been on my mind, obviously, in thinking about it. And I think one of the things, just a, a comment, I don't know if it's a comment or a question, really, but um, there's a sort of a sense of intimidation of trying to find, you know, as I'm now looking for something, it's not necessarily an occupation, but more something like you said, a passion. Mm -hmm. there's a little bit of um, maybe it's imposter syndrome or, or intimidation, which is an odd feeling, you know, like, you're, like if, if I feel like, like you came from a high level of my organization and it was, you know, what I was doing now, I'm kind of coming off that into feeling kind of a little bit like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And I feel like an imposter or, or something. I don't know if you can speak to that a little bit, but uh, I just wanted to ask that question and say, thank you for a lot of the stuff. Yeah. Really well, it, and it's a great question. Um, I, I've, you know, I've coached uh, CEOs who, you know, were, were running hundred million dollar companies, and now they're, um, you know, now they're honeydew, right? Now they're fixing the dishwasher, and picking up, you know, the grandkids at school, and playing games with them, and taking the dog for a walk. And so, what I try to instill is the idea of being an explorer that you get to, to to try all kinds of different things because you're not tied to being the fire chief anymore. You can, you can experiment, you can try all kinds of things and there's nobody watching. There's nobody saying, hey, didn't you used to be the chief? And now what are you doing? You're, now you're putting in uh, sprinklers in your lawn, you know? Um, yeah, I am and it's kind of fun. Um, you know, and so I think that we have to just let go of uh, it's a matter of letting go of that former identity. And that is really it is tough. I mean, I was a CEO and uh, I think the sailing trip made it, you know, made a clean break because when I left, I could only focus on that one thing, which was sailing. So um, but be an explorer, be an experimenter, try new things and and, you know, even try relaxing. Do some, you know, do breathing exercises, go to yoga class, you know, um, uh, you know, do things that, you know, just go for a bike ride and, and, and just uh, be a kid again is what I try to say. Thank you. That's helpful. Good. And also, um, if you uh, go to the, if you go to my other website, which is LarryJacobson.com, you can download that passion quiz for free. So just LarryJacobson.com and then just download it and it, it'll, it'll help. It, it, it kind of directs you to something that you want to do. It's very helpful. It's actually a great tool to use. It is. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Great questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you know, that's all I think that we have time for. So, um, uh, there, you know, there are unexpected challenges. If you, if you want it, that the free coaching session with me, it's uh, well, it's not really free because you're buying the course for ninety five dollars, but that's kind of free since coaching is usually two hundred fifty dollars a session. 
Um, but I'd love to to work with anybody um, who goes there and it's buoytraining.com. Thank you all. Again, I'm Rumana Jabin with Keller Williams. I was thinking of giving a quick market overview for um, all of you, but for the sake of time, it may be better to direct you to my blog at rumanajabin.com, which, which has an extensive market overview broken down by our local areas. I would also like to help you in regards to retirement planning. One of the most pressing questions I hear about retirement naturally is where will I live? Some of you may own homes already. Some of you may be considering purchasing a home, but maybe aren't sure where or when is the best time. I would like to meet you personally and go over your goals, both personal and financial goals. I'm not here to sell your home. I'm not here to sell you a home. Yes, I'm a realtor, but my goal is to help you to do what is right for yourself and for your family. That might mean keeping your home and living there or renting it out. I can help you make that decision. It might mean moving out of the area. I can help you with that too. It might mean buying a vacation home somewhere else. It might mean buying a duplex nearby to provide extra income. To fund your life, I can help and I can help you decide. So whatever your real estate needs are, please consider me as a resource. My job is simply to help you make the best decisions that will enable you to move on with your live streams. I should mention here that I am a member of Keller Williams Real Estate Planners, a distinct group that is trained specifically in helping others maintain their generational wealth. You have worked hard for your money and your wealth. You deserve to keep it and pass it on to your family or those you want to bless. I can help. Here is an example of some ways I can help you. Do you have investment properties? Awesome, if you do. How long have you owned them? If it was a long-term investment, there may be plenty of equity. Now, here is the surprise. If you have a lot of equity in a home, but are not getting a proportionate return, you may not have a great investment for your needs. And maybe you have more hassles than it is worth. Here is a case study. This is a duplex that was purchased for 550,000 with 25% down payment. The buyers paid 137,500 in down payment and the balance of 412,500 was a loan. Ten years later, the home is now worth million three, one million three hundred thousand. That is impressive. The value is now almost 240% higher after 10 years. The payments made by the tenants contributed 62,500 to the principal, and there is still $300,000 left on the loan, but the appreciation alone as 800,000 to the value. So, Take the value of 1.3 million and subtract the loan of 300,000. Congratulations, you now have $1 million in equity. The total cash invested by you was your down payment, which adds into your equity and the other expenses you may have had along the way, which you will not get back. The cost of your investment in this case was $250,000. So your return on that investment was an additional 
you now have four times the amount you spent, which means take 250,000 multiplied by four, now you have 1 million. That is a 400% return on investment in 10 years. Nicely done. But also consider you have 1 million in equity invested in the property. The rent you collect after you expenses is 50,000 annual in this example. That is your NOI or net operating income. That sounds nice, but 50,000 divided by 1 million is 5%. You are getting a 5% return on your million. Is that good enough for you? Are there other ways to invest 1 million that may bring you a higher return? So these are the things I like to consider with my clients. What is your property investment doing for you? We have to wrap up. So let me thank our panelists again, Larry Jacobson and Bruce Stewart. Thanks to my husband, Michael Schmitz, who is behind the scene, keeping the Zoom running. I am Romana Jabin. We have six more sessions going forward. Please invite others. Jennifer Hiller will join us September 26th, 27th, and 28th to talk about how to move easily from one place to other, likely to a smaller place or a retirement home. She will be joining us here Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in two, in, uh, two weeks. And Michelle Morgan will talk to us about how to help our parents remain at home in their twilight years. It might apply to us too. Senior helpers was a godsend to my family when my own father-in-law needed help. Michelle will be the speaker on October 10th, 11th, and 12th. Hope to see you then. And thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Ramana. Thanks, Bruce. Thank, thank you very thank much. You thank you. Thank you.